Today I'm doing the Girl Scout cookie tag. Welcome to Candlewick Library, I'm Cheryl. This tag was originally created by a web of stories and I was tagged by Kelly at Kelly Reads A Lot. Confession time, I actually don't like Girl Scout cookies and that seems like a very unpopular opinion, but I have had a few of them over the years as I go through this tag, you'll see that most of these I've never even heard of. The only ones I ever really liked were the Samoas and I have show and tell. So these Keebler coconut dreams taste just as good if not better than the Samoa cookies and they are a huge cookie package for about a third of the price. And recently my husband brought home these caramel coconut cookies from Walmart. They are just the generic Walmart brand. So they are even cheaper. They were less than $2 for this huge package of cookies. So even with the kind that I liked, I never ever buy Girl Scout cookies. So that's my confession, but I'm still gonna do the tag. My goal with this tag is to try to pick books that I don't think I've talked about on here before. And so for number one, Trefoils, which I don't know what kind of cookie that is, uh, a classic book you love. I chose Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I, I think that the Little House on the Prairie books are considered classic, and I love all of them. I love the whole series, but when I read these out loud to my daughters, we were surprised at how much we all loved Farmer Boy. It actually made me like Almanzo so much more, and it added so much to the story for me to know his background. Number two, Lemon Ups a book you find inspiring. I don't know what lemon ups are either. The book that I find inspiring is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. I read this quite a few years ago with my book club and I just breezed through this whole book. Of course, this tells the story of Louis Zamperini and it tells the story of his childhood and how he ended up in World War II and then how he was shot down and how he ended up getting captured and being in these prison camps in with the Japanese torturing him. And then it also tells the story of his faith afterward. Number three, S'mores, a comforting book. I do know what s'mores are, but I didn't know there was a cookie called s'mores. A book that I find comforting is Mother Carrie's Chickens by Kate Douglas Wiggin. And I might've talked about this one before, but I can't remember. This is the story of a family of a mother and her children and how they go into this little small town. If you've ever seen the Disney movie, Summer Magic, this is the book that it's based on. And I actually, I love, I love that movie. Uh, that was one of my favorite movies growing up. I still love it. And I actually like the book even better. And then my oldest daughter liked this book better than the movie too. I recommend both the book and the movie as comforting. Number four is another cookie I've never heard of, Adventurefuls. It's an adventurous book. So for that, I Married Adventure by Osa Johnson. And this tells the story of her and her husband, Martin. It tells us how they met and together they traveled all over, went to these little islands, sometimes with cannibals, and they made nature films and how Disney was inspired by a lot of their, their stories. And it just, I just thought this was such an interesting and fun book to read. And I loved learning more about them. And I immediately actually went and bought a really cheap DVD on Amazon of one of their nature films to watch. And it was really fun to watch that after reading it. Number five is Samoas. And it's supposed to be a book that blends two or more genres. Leviathan by Scott Westerfield. This is a story about Alec, who is a prince on the run, and Darren, a girl who disguises herself as a boy so that she can be in the British Air Service. They're thrown together on this warship and there's little creatures in it um, that are, you know, little messenger lizards. This is the first in a trilogy. And these books are like historical fiction meets steampunk. I loved these books. I haven't read them for quite a while, so this is a series that I really need to read again. But I enjoy steampunk and I enjoy historical fiction, so I thought it was really fun. Number six is do -Si Do's, a book that you love that everyone else seems to hate and a book that you hate that everyone else seems to love. So first, a book that I love that everyone seems to hate. I would say the Twilight books as a whole. They're ones that when they first came out, I was, I was fully open about how much I like them, but now it's become something people are more embarrassed about liking, but I'm not gonna be embarrassed about liking them. I enjoy the Twilight books. I don't think they're the best books ever written or the best stories ever told, but I think that they're entertaining and they're fun to read. And New Moon I picked in particular because I know a lot of people hated New Moon because it's Edward's gone most of the time and it's mostly Jacob. But I was team Jacob. I loved Jacob from the very beginning. I thought Edward was controlling and I didn't like him. Midnight Sun, when that came out, that changed my perspective on, on Edward. I liked him a lot better after reading that book because I understood him more but I still liked Jacob. And if I had written it, she would have ended up with Jacob. And as for the book that I hate that everyone else seems to love, I don't hate it, 
but I was having a hard time thinking of one that I've actually disliked or something I don't read that everybody else loves. And so instead of going with straight hate, because like I said, I don't hate it, I thought, you know, Brandon Sanderson is one of the most popular authors, I think, on BookTube. And so I'm going to say Brandon Sanderson books and don't hate me. I'm just waiting for the hate now. I really, really liked The Way of the Kings. In fact, I went to an author event and I met him. As I got further along in the series and bought ones, I looked ahead and I read things about him and I found out about a lot of content that is showing up later in his books that I'm not okay with reading. And so I chose not to read Brandon Sanderson anymore. So that would be my very controversial author I don't read, I don't hate, but I don't read that everyone seems to love. And number seven is Thin Mints, one of your all-time favorite books. I don't think I've ever talked about The Hunger Games, and it's fresh in my mind because my mom and I watched the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes movie last week for my birthday, and so I was thinking about how much I really enjoy the Hunger Games book series and the movies, and I think that there's so many messages and good themes to be taken out of these stories. Obviously, there's a lot of really horrible things too, but I, I think that the overall message of the books is a very interesting one and it leads to a lot of discussion. And I just think she is a really good writer. I realize I didn't talk about the story of Twilight or Hunger Games, but I think most people know the stories of those. So I'm not gonna worry about adding that in. Number eight is tagalongs. Uh, tag some fellow booktubers to do this video. And I, I've noticed a lot of people doing it, so I'm not even sure anymore who hasn't done this yet and who has done it already. So I picked two people. If you've already done it, obviously you don't need to do it again. And if you haven't done it, don't feel pressured. Only do this if you would like to. But I'm gonna tag Alma at Alma's Book Journey and Morgan at Morgan's Endless Bookshelf. So let me know if you decide to do it. I would love to see your videos.